Mm, hello, all you happy lost souls. Um, let's get the dumb stuff out of the way. Um, subscribe if you like. If you don't, feel free to comment. Um, I do forgive those um, who I not gotten back to in the comment section. I haven't looked at it in a long time. Very, very busy. Um, this is just a quick video on really a single piece of the collection. Um, it's kind of chronologically fits the last video I put up about the uh, the KGC possible connections. I don't want to get too deep into that. Um, if this is part of their uh, code or anything like that, these symbols, um, they do match uh, pretty simplistic ancient uh, Masonic trail markers and, and things that the, the original Masons um, that were actually practicing masonry um and, and were masters of their craft and and got the free free pass to go anywhere to, to do their work and became freemasons uh and this is the middle ages really um when all the crazy cathedrals across europe were built and um that that kind of stuff but these uh these symbols mean very basic things um there also could be crude markers for um precious ore um, these three dots especially, um, but I want to get more into, uh, the context. This piece pretty much, um, was found when I was really starting to get into it, uh, researching the collection and starting to put the Native American artifacts together and then finding metals in the same area. Um, this, um, this piece that I call, uh, a map stone. Um, this, I have no idea what it is. It could be more modern. It could be part of the KGC. I don't believe that really. I believe it has more to do with the mining activity, Native Americans and Native American sim, um, symbolism uh, and possible code that they were using. Um, but what I can tell you about it is it's about the size of a human heart. Um, the reason this probably would have got left behind. So this was found about 11, no, not that long ago, not about nine years ago. And it was found, um, near a place we used to call the Island, um, back along the, uh, Penny Pack trail. Um, and this place sits within a Creek. It's not an Island anymore. The Creek has totally transformed, um, itself around that area. Actually, it was colonials and probably Native Americans before that and beavers prior to that because these are remnants of old beaver dams and old fishing weirs that have kind of shaped the creek over time. But anyway, you go out artifact hunting, um, usually the day or two after a flash flood or the creek washes out, it's the perfect time to find things. Uh, new layers of the deposit are brought to the surface. Um, washouts along banks can expose things that are actually intact and, and in this case that's what happened this um a tree that wasn't near the creek that was on high ground but slowly as the bank is getting eaten away by the flooding and the erosion has now its roots exposed hanging out of the creek bank and this thing covered in dirt along with uh hold on one second because i have it nearby along with this crazy little ingot um, which like got lacquer or something, some kind of clear coat on it that I have to strip off. I don't know why. Um, it was probably near a, a project in here or something, but I got most of it off. But, uh, this is some non-ferrous uh, metal. Uh, it's greenish and it has a lot of traits of copper, but it's not just copper. It's this crazy half crescent, like ingot shape. It'll stand on its own it's on a kind of flimsy surface right now. And this came tumbling out. This was really big, and I wasn't into taking big stuff back then. I was still really getting into learning the bigger artifacts, the Celts and, and the hammers. And I was just kind of looking for little arrowheads, things like that. Mainly fishing, going there with a girlfriend at the time. and um, Still my friend, uh... She goes on a lot of hunts with me. She has parts of the collection with her as well. But this washed out, and it had tons of sparkle, and you can see that right now. 
uh, in it. And uh, this distinct weird shape, we just saw little craters and stuff on top. We thought that was just part of the, part of the rock in itself. The weight is strange. It's oddly heavy for its size. Um, and uh, kind of looks like this geode or um, this weird stuff running through the back of it. It's got this kind of dingy goldish brownish color to it and then you get some bright gold coloring in there um, obviously these parts if you can look closely they're sharp and distinct and they have distinct points at each end this is made by a very sharp chisel uh, metal tool um, same thing with these ends but they just form a distinct pattern triangles a big triangle with a triangle in the middle that's actually a trail symbol for something buried or something um, valuable or life-saving uh, under high ground uh, these three dots in, in, in trail code mean in running water or three points along running water you see there's a triangulation here with these little dots and the big one in the middle um, now there are markers like that laid out back there but um, could it be part of the KCG or something earlier um, linked to the Revolutionary War, the Beaver War, um, Washington was in the area, the trails have been used throughout history, and this area is very historic. Um, I'm going to have a more detailed video because I did a lot of close-ups and more high-def uh, shots of this piece. Um, I don't know who made it or what time period it's from or what its purpose is, but um, I can tell you, like I said, what the materials are. So originally, being naive to some of the gems and geology portions of it, because there's so many, high shine, extremely hard. Um, literally took a couple samples right there. You can see it. They pulled them out. Some diamond testers were reading diamonds on them. Um, a couple uh, people I know personally that are in the jewelry um, field that are certified gemologists um, and uh, certified uh to work with gold and silver and, and do it, you know, every day of their lives. Uh, they um, said, oh, this is some form of honeycomb uh, quartz or um, there's these thing called um, Hertzberg diamonds. They were, uh, they're found up in the New York area. They're like a, such a, a hard high grade crystal quartz that they're, they're almost considered like a industrial type diamond. Um, this whole rock is cut perfectly in half like that. It could almost be viewed from the top as like a three-dimensional map with a canyon with a cut going through it. They got really excited, not about this side, because I was real excited about all the, the stone, the markings. They got excited when they flipped it over and they weighed it and they felt the weight. But they wouldn't say why they're excited. <laughs> the jewelers, the gemologists... Um, they're more acquaintances than friends, so they're kind of business people more so. Um, they were uh, not giving up their cards about it. They just kept asking me, where did you find this? Where did you find this? I just kept saying around here. Um, so I started cleaning it up, and then I realized upon closer examination, that is not just limestone. That is gold and silver veins running through the courts that are left behind. So we soaked this in Coca-Cola for a while to kind of eat up some of the lime um, and leave behind the gold and the silver that's running through the rock and even under some parts of the courts, giving this goldish color. Um, and then, like I said, you flip it over and that's very high grade. This is gold. Um, so... Yeah, this strange artifact and then uh so the hand placement why we think it's a pointer stone it's pointed first of all it washed out of a tree root system that had some carvings on it that i gotta go take pictures of that tree is still there um so and it's got these odd symbols all over it and you flip it this way and this is the orientation that we originally saw it in and i was like oh it looks like a crude skull so you got the skull the eyes the nose the mouth, the head, flip it this way, you got like the seven symbol, you got the three dots marking uh, gold or silver, you flip it this way, you can clearly see the vein running directly through the whole marker stone, 
Now, what has amazed me is I'm a big put it in your hand, feel it, like who made it, why do they make it, and carve it where. Right here, there's a there's a thumb grip in placement that was carved purposely. Your finger fits right into that notch. The bottom portion then hangs out, and if you flip it over, you'll notice that where those veins run fit perfectly in between each one of your fingers. It fits like a glove, perfectly like this. Almost as if it's being used to find something or to mark something in multiple ways. Um, and uh, that could be a group, a host of different different types of people. Uh, it, it could be the Native Americans marking where the mine is. Uh, it could be early Dutch or French marking where the mine is. It could be the revolutionary soldiers. It could be the KGC marking out where mines are or buried stashes are for their cause. Um, we don't know what and where it's from, but it's so interesting because it's found at the heart of where all this other crazy stuff is found. And I know some of it seems preposterous. All this stuff is here in one area. But it's not so preposterous if there is an extremely valuable gold and silver um, deposit or mine uh, that was kept secret by certain people. And this knowledge was passed down to individuals over time and then got lost, but may still be guarded and protected by by very, very few individuals that are part of these secret organizations that lie within secret organizations. Um, I could be a Mason, a high up Mason, and my buddy could be one, and he could be a KGC member, and I would not know at all. Um, so, nor would you want this extremely racist. It, it turned into a racist organization. Now, my research is kind of deeper into this, that there could have possibly been a treasury or, or gold hiding or, you know, in case some shit happens, insurance plan with buried treasure all over prior to the KGC existing. And it was called something different. Um, and it was kind of adopted uh, and, and reused because the people responsible for it at the time were already um, sympathizers to the Southern uh, cause and um, were Freemasons that... Uh, were high up uh, lodge members of, you know, lodges down south. Um, so they kind of just overtook a already um, existing infrastructure of buried uh, treasure deposits. Um, I'm not real sure. Uh, the Spanish used symbols like this to mark uh, silver and gold processing that was adopted by the Dutch. Um, it could be. Well, I'm pretty positive that not everything just happened in one place or all this history happened in one place for a reason. I'm pretty sure many people were attracted to the same area for a reason, and that's for a resource. Um, it's for money. It's for uh, trade. Um, it's centralized. Uh, there's fresh water. It's rich in... Um, back then, shad, eel, um, uh, trout, um, catfish, um, and chub, um, sunfish. So, um, there were even gar up here. Um, there were bear, deer, moose in the area. Um, all kinds of game. There was huge deposits of agate and soapstone and limestone um, that are exposed. Uh, there's silver and obviously gold and copper in the area. Um, these metals are all non-ferrous that are running through here. That vein right there is so hard. And I mean, this could be platinum. Uh, this is silver in here, this brown stuff. And you got the gold up in here that continues to run through in the same vein. Um, the soapstone cuts through here, and you're literally seeing the vein exposed through one piece, and it's heart-shaped, and it was worked, and it is literally shaped to fit in your hand just like that, with your fingers all in the notches. And that's just um, 
It's just crazy. So it shows you where to hold it. That ori uh, orientates you on where to find or, or go to at these points. And um, I think I know what this one is. And I think I know what these two are. And that's a triangulation. Once you have that, you just have to figure out what, what the other symbols mean. Um, uh, I really think it all just simply points to um, an area of very, very rich, valuable ore. Um, and the knowledge of this was passed down just a few over time and has become a myth and a legend. Uh, legends of lost silver mines. Uh, but this is the strangest uh, effigy stone, map stone, pointer stone that I've ever found. And um, clearly uh, distinguishable from other uh, Native American um, based effigy stones that I have um, and bigger art type uh, pieces in the fact that these marks were all made by a highly sharpened steel tool. I'm not saying uh, Native Americans do not have access to that, but it, it would it would be more likely um, with this coding and this uh, Masonic symbols on here that it is associated to um, some faction of um, older European um, interest uh, or something related to a more modern um, time like the KGC um, but I feel like it's too old for that um, but who knows uh, very interesting piece with all kinds of rich ore running through it beautiful quartz and a perfect pointer stone that is shaped like the human heart and also you can clearly see the skull now, could it be a burial stone? Could these be native symbols that we have no idea because they're, they're lost because the culture was wiped out? Um, absolutely could be that. I don't know. Um, I can only tell you the materials that were in it because I went and had that checked out. Um, I always have to be careful when I have things checked out because people ask a lot of strange questions like where did you find things instead of telling you what it really is that you're looking at? Uh, some people can be greedy in the academic world you have to be careful because they'll confiscate your stuff or tell you it is something that it isn't um or they'll uh, want to collaborate with you at first and then <laughs> there's all kinds of uh, reasons a lot of people's work says one thing and if they hear somebody else's work say something else it threatens their livelihood and their stake in the claim um i think that's nonsense i think as new things are discovered um it doesn't make the old things wrong it just straightens the path corrects the timeline it doesn't mean that that information or those theories weren't useful in um in advancing uh, archaeology it just means that newer discoveries were found and they don't support that in this way but may support it in another way um, but people are just too stubborn. They want it, their notion or their theory of how it was to match exactly what they say. But it's impossible. You're just bringing back tiny little fragments and pieces of a huge story and trying to say, this was the story. You have no idea until you find more pieces. We only know uh, as, as much as we dig up. I say that all the time. But um, this is just a quick video on this uh, this stone that was found in the heart of this whole silver mine um, uh, story. Um, but this one was so unique um, that I've shown it in many videos, and um, I still don't know exactly what it is um, or who made it or from what time period, only that it is uh, got a lot of symbols on it that were um, carved out by a sharp metal tool, um, that it is uh, extremely heavy. This thing weighs about five pounds and it should for its size weigh about a pound and a half uh, so uh, that's the gold running through it and silver um, i do believe that some of these markings pertain to it being a extremely rich piece of ore um, and this in itself having a ton of value i don't know how much exactly i value it as an artifact more than the gold in it um, and uh, don't go uh, trying to dig up on these lands. Uh, you will get arrested quickly. Um, it's uh, 
you don't do that it's a natural reserve um <clears throat> so um right and um this could uh just be a native american uh, grave good um i i don't know um but finding it with the, the copper ingot um pretty uh pretty uh, strange stuff um, three-dimensional map it very well could be but these things matching your hand you got this thumb indentation and your hand just falls right over it they're just finger grips so I just want to say thanks again, everybody, and um, stay tuned for the next video. It'll probably be a more uh, detailed video with this rock in it some more. But uh, thanks again, and sub uh, subscribe if you haven't, or if you don't want to, don't. Um, like if you don't, uh, then don't like. But like I, like I always say, um, just stay happy, stay safe. Um, and I just hope um, we find some answers out, just sharing some cool stuff. All right. Have a good one, everyone. Peace.